For today's lesson, we're going to practice hand tracing lists. We've done some hand tracing in the past with our for loops and our while loops and with our functions. We're going to practice hand tracing with lists. So what does it mean when we hand trace? We're going to go through each line of code like the computer does and execute each line of code. Your task is to keep track of each variable and the values of each variable. At the end, you should be able to explain your results. And you can check your results by typing the same code into the computer. You realize that this should just be a check. You should still do the hand tracing yourself and then only at the end type in the code and see if you got it correct. Here are some reasons that you should practice and be good at hand tracing a list or anything in code. Um, the hand tracing will help you remember the different functions and methods of a list. The examples give you the examples that you hand trace are examples of how functions and methods can be used in a code so you can see how to use them correctly. It will also help you understand how and when to use the functions as you get used to seeing what they do and how they work. It's a good exercise in problem solving and it will help prepare you for the multiple choice tests. Also, it's a good indicator to see if you really are under understanding the code that you are typing. So let's try some examples. Now the first few problems we're going to do aren't actually going to be hand tracing. We're just going to take a look at some example questions that might be given to you like on a test or on a bell work or closure and see if you can remember the lines of code. So the first one, just declare a list that contains these values and it shows you the values that you want. There's more than one, more than one way to do this. So a simple way to do it, first of all I have to come up with a name and remember I cannot use list because that's a function so I'm going to use my list equals and then using my square brackets, I can simply list all the values. So if I know in advance what the values are, I can go ahead and create it. I don't have to use a loop. So that's one way of doing it. If I want to use a loop, I can notice that these numbers go in order. So from 1 to 10. So I could use a list, a, a for loop. So I'm just going to say for x in range. I don't want to start at 0. I want to start at 1 and I want to go to 10. So my range is going to be 1 to 11. And x is going to be the value that gets put into that, in, that I'm going to append. So my list dot append and the value that I'm appending is x. x is going to start at 1 and it's going to go to 10. And I just append each one and this will also give the same thing as this. Now, if you're not comfortable with a for loop, you could also use a while loop. So I could have a count, and I could start the count at 1, be my first value, and while count is less than 11, I can append it. So I have my list dot append, and I'm going to put count in here. That would be the value that I'm going to be appending and then I'm going to increment my count. So there's three different ways and I've used append two of the times. You could also use insert and you can kind of probably be a little bit creative. Can you come up with even some more ways of creating this a list that stores those values? <clears throat> the next question is to write statements that change. So that I already have my list I'm not going to be inserting and pending. I'm going to be changing a current element uh, and it tells me which ones I'm going to change. <clears throat> so I want to change the first and the last element. Well, I just have to think to myself, what's the index of the first element? And that would be zero. So I'm going to access my list, which is my list. And then in order to access a single element, I use the square brackets. I'm going to put the index inside the square brackets. So I want 0, that's the first position. I want, I want to change it to the value 10. So this one line of code will change. Okay, Notice the keyword there. I'm not adding or inserting. I'm changing the value. Now I also want to change the last element. Well, I might say, well, I have 10 elements, so I'm just going to use 9. What if I don't know how many elements I have? I can always use my len. So I'm going to have my list and I'm going to take the len of my list. But remember, the length is always going to be one more than the index. So minus one. I put all of that in my square brackets. That's going to be the index of my last 
element no matter what, no matter how many elements I have. And I'm going to set it equal to 10. So this is some code that will always work no matter the length, how many elements are in your list. For our next problem, we're going to add a number. So in problem number two, we changed a number. Now we're going to add a number, and it's going to tell us where to add it. If it was just going to add it to the end, we know we could use append. But we're going to be adding it somewhere else in the list. So we're going to use insert. So let's write a statement that will add the number five to a list at the first and the last element. Let's work on the first one at, uh, first. So I have my list. And in order to insert, remember that is a method, so I'm going to use my dot notation. And I have insert, and then in parentheses, I have two arguments. The first argument is the index. So what is the index of the first element? The index is zero. And the element that I'm going to add is five. So we inset, insert at index zero, the number five. Now we want to work with the last element. Well, what index is the last element? I can use len again. So I'm going to have my list dot insert, and then instead of an actual number, I'm going to get that number from the len function. So len my list, and that has its own argument, and then comma five. So two arguments. Now you might say, well, len is one more than the list. That's right, and that's where the new one is going to go because it's at the end. So I've got two lines of code that are going to add numbers to my list. Now we're going to get to some real hand tracing. I've got several lines of code here that I'll have to do with a list. And it's going to be changing the elements, adding and removing as we go. And you want to keep track of all the values so at the end you can say what the final list is. The first line of code is just going to declare the list. We're calling it names. And it's going to give it one value. So I've got one value at Fritz. And you also want to keep track of the index. The index of the first value is zero. Do that one. The next line of code is going to insert at index one. So I'm going to go up to the end. I'm going to insert and. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of room because I might be inserting and whatnot as I go. So I'm going to move over just a little bit, but I'm going to give its index as one. Now I'm going to insert at zero. So I'm going to come to the front, and I'm going to insert Sue. So I'm actually going to go front over here. I've given myself some room. And now this index is 0. This index becomes 1, and this index becomes 2. I have to adjust everything. Now I'm going to pop at 2. So you have to remember that pop does it by index. So I go to index 2, and to pop it, I'm going to delete it. So we've done all of these. Now the last one is to append, so I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to append Lee. And it gets index 2. So what am I left with? Sue, Fritz, and Lee. So my final list names equals, and I've got Sue, Fritz, and Lee. And that's my final list. We just did our first hand tracing. And let's take a look at another one, and this one has numbers to it, and you can see that there's going to be a little bit more involved, so we're really going to have to keep track. And we're, once again, just going to go step by step. So the first one declares my list called numbers, and it's an empty list, so I don't have any values yet. But then I'm going to do some append, so append always just gets it started. The first one is going to be 5, and its index is 0. The next one is going to be 2, and its index is 1. And the next one is 8, and its index is 2. Notice I've kind of given myself some room, so as I insert and remove, I've got kind of some wiggle room going on. So we just did these. Now the next one is insert. Remember, it's position first and then value. So I'm going to insert at index 1. Index 1 is right here. It's already got a value, so these are going to move over. I'm going to have a new index 1, and I'm going to insert the value 3. So what happens to this one? It becomes index 2, and this one becomes index 3. Now I've got another insert. I'm going to insert at 0, so I'm going to go to the front. I'm going to insert the value 6. So 6 gets index 0, 5, 
has index one, three now has index two, two has index three, don't get confused. So this is the value, this is the index. And eight has index four. I just have to adjust everything. Now I'm gonna do a pop. So remember pop is by index, I'm gonna go to index three and I'm gonna delete this item. Nothing changes over here, but over here this gets adjusted down, so now eight goes back to index three. Okay, now the not, last one is to remove. Remove does by value. So it's gonna look for a five, and the first five is right here, and it deletes it. So this stays the same, what happens over here, it gets readjusted. Now this is index one, this has been already deleted, and this is index two. So I'm left with six, three, and eight. So what is numbers? It is six, three, and eight. So follow along with me. Make sure that you're just checking your append, your inserts, pops, and removes to get your final. Our last problem isn't going to really be hand tracing, but we are going to follow some, some lists of instructions we're going to write the code to make sure that we know how to implement each thing that we're asked to do. So if you were to do an algorithm for a program, which you should do, and this was your list of things, then how would you actually take this algorithm and translate it into code? So the first thing is to define an empty list called my list. You should be really good at doing that now. So I've got my line of code for my empty list. Now I'm going to use a loop to assign 10 random numbers to my list. It doesn't tell me what kind of loop to use. You do know that it's gonna be 10, so it's definitely a definite loop. You can use a for loop or a while loop with a counter. They will both accomplish the same thing. I'm going to use a for loop. And I don't have any elements yet, so I can't traverse a list by element because there aren't any. I'm gonna to have to do it by index. So for I in range, and I know that I want 10 numbers, so that's going to be my range. I need to get random numbers, so I'm going to just assign to random, uh, I'm gonna assign it to num, random.randint. And the instructions don't tell you the range of random numbers, so you can pick them. I'm just gonna use one to 10. And now since I am assigning them to my list, that means append. So my list dot append none. And yes, you have to write out the whole code. So this for loop right here will assign 10 random numbers to my list. Now the next thing is to sort. Is sort a function or is it a method? That's the main thing to remember because they're different. If it's a method call or a function call. Sort is a method. So that means use dot notation, my list, dot sort, and even though it doesn't have an argument, I still have to have my parentheses. The last line of instruction is to get a total of the elements that are even numbers. Anything I have something like this, I want to look at all the numbers in my list. That means I'm going to traverse the list. You can do it by index or by element. You, uh, the easiest way is to do it by element. And you can do that if I don't care where those, those elements are. And here, I don't really care where it is. I just want to take a look at each one. So I can do it the easy way. I'm going to use my for loop for element in my list. I'm going to look at each element, and I'm going to determine if it's even. Well, how do we do that? We've done that in Chapter 4 and Chapter 5. I'm going to use the modulo division modulo by two, and if it equals zero, it is even. So I have my if statement. If element modulo two equals equals zero, then hopefully you know that means that it is even. If it is even, I'm gonna get a total. So total plus equals element. So this is going to give me a total of all the even elements. And if it's not, I don't have to have an else. I just want to basically ignore it. Now, hopefully you're saying to yourself, well, if I'm in accumulating a total, I better initialize it somewhere. Otherwise, I will get a runtime error. So I'm going to go above my for loop. 
and I'm going to initialize my total to zero. So then that would keep me from getting any kind of errors. So we've just gone through a list of instructions and we've translated it into actual code using my list method and functions. Now for your in-class assignment, you're going to practice doing some of these in small groups. Anytime you're having problems, you can always refer back to this video lecture or ask me for help. These are some concepts that you really want to make sure that you can do and you don't want to just you know give up or stop trying or anything like that. Make sure that you're working your way through it and hopefully you won't have any troubles.